Hi, I'm Will. Hi, I'm Allison. Hello, I'm Evan. And welcome back to RA3D with First Alumni of UW-Madison. So today we sort of did a lot of the mechanical things for our robots. So you've seen kind of what our design looks like overall. We've got that tank drive, we've got our intake for both the algae with those two larger rollers and then with the coral for that smaller roller, which is passive. Um, both of the rollers for the algae are powered or active. And then the, roll, the bottom roller for the algae can be reversed to pick up coral. Then we have all that mounted on an arm with one pivot point down here at the wrist. And we have another pivot point up here, what we're calling the shoulder. With this design, we have a couple of positives and then a couple of deltas or things that we think could be changed in future revisions. So one of the really cool things about this is that we have that one mechanism where we're picking up the algae and the coral using kind of the same intake and having that both on one wrist makes it easy for your programming team to program and control. The other benefit of this design being a vertical intake is that you can pick the algae off of the reef, like so, where you're picking it and holding it on the top and the bottom. We also, with this design, we're able to do a ground intake for both game pieces. However, like we mentioned, the um, simplicity of our arm design means that when we're extending, we tend, or there are some configurations where the length of this arm is violating that 18 inch boundary outside your frame perimeter. So this is one of the things that we think really should be revised in uh, future designs based off of this. Um, one of the ways that you could do that was with a linear slide instead of this rigid arm. There may be other ways to do that using an elevator or other um, vertical movement uh, designs. One of the other things that we think could be changed about our design is the fact that a lot of these shafts are cantilevered, which means they're only supported on one side of the shaft, particularly here. And you can also see an example up here. Those can be a little difficult uh, mechanically just because they're applying a large moment on the bearing or wherever they're uh, secured to the rest of the design. We also would like to be able to fully rotate this mechanism at the wrist. We think that would help with some of our issues around uh, violating that 18 inch boundary outside the frame perimeter. All these are things that uh, we're looking at uh, for future revisions that could be something that we address tomorrow or it may just be something that we would like teams to keep in mind as we go forward with our design. All right, so starting off today, one of the main things that we accomplished was rebuilding our intake fully in metal. This is made out of two inch by one eighth inch uh, aluminum plates. Uh, all of this was made out of one eight foot stock, which is why we can't really have rounded corners on these. We would love to round them, but unfortunately that's just not within our machining capabilities right now. Uh, as for major design changes, none have really happened with the core dimensions. The only really, the only big change that we've made is with the wheels, which we have upgraded to four inches as compared to the previous three inches. We now have everything powered by sprockets and one neo, one neo motor down here on an ultra planetary, on a max planetary gearbox that is geared one to one. That way we can both intake pieces and potentially even shoot them up into the barge. As before, the intake works by having these, the top two arms, rotate inwards to allow big pieces of algae in to the top slot. And it can also reverse to intake coral on the bottom slot with the passive roller at the very bottom. For today, we were considering switching to a two motor configuration in which we'd have another wheel for uh, separately controlling the coral intake to allow us individual, intake, uh, individual control of both the top and bottom intakes. However, we decided against that because of simplicity, that meaning less moving parts, less motors, and with the mechanism being a lot smaller, which helps us a little bit with staying within the guidelines. Also, for the future plans, we are planning on adding fins to the very bottom to allow us to not only run along the floor and ensure our intake is at the right height, but also to possibly align uh, to the stands of the reef when scoring. So for most of our cutouts and holes, we used a CNC router. This is also, you could also do this with just a drill with either a traditional drill bit or with a step bit. 
we the the reason we chose CNC manufacturing is just to just to help with our chain alignments and for other things. But you can also do this by hand, just using careful um, calipers. Um, and it's very important to make sure you have some sort of chain tensioning, especially if you're doing things without a CNC, so that your chains always stay in tension. Or of course, belts are always a good option too. Uh, and then we also we would do recommend if copying a similar design. Uh, using a linear extender for the arm so you get a little more movement um, to make sure it's inside frame perimeter. So when we were starting our design process, uh, the first step we really went through was understanding the geometry of how we wanted to put this all together. A really easy way to do that is to use a sketch in your favorite CAD program. So we used Onshape and sketch out the general shape of from a side profile, what do our bumpers look like? What does the base of our robot look like? What kind of height do we want this center post to be at? What length are we looking at for the arm? And then what size or general geometry are we looking at for our intake? And so you can do all of this with really basic shapes like rectangles uh, to, to, er, to simulate these different tubing or the metal plates. By using that and a variety of different geometric restraints inside the sketch in your CAD software, you can figure out what a lot of this is going to look like trigonometrically, geometrically, really easily. Hi, I'm Megan with FIRST alumni of UW-Madison, showing off our field elements here at the Milwaukee Robotics Academy. This is our mock-up of the reef. We use the instructions provided by FIRST to create the plywood and 2x4 wood trough, and then we bought 1.5 inch PVC pipe um, to build the reef. Here we used 45 degree connectors, which we bought at the hardware store, um, but then we calculated the right pipe lengths in order to ensure that this end point is at exactly the same height as it is on the actual reef. I would recommend 3D printing connectors at a 35 degree angle, but if you can't have that, um, this 45 degree connector is a great option. Um, as you can see, the algae starts here in the reef and it is pretty hard to knock off. If you just hit it from the top, we're not really seeing it bounce out or from the sides. So that's one benefit to our design, which is going to scoop it out and intake it from the reef. Um, in addition, the top here is right around six feet tall, so we can drop the coral right onto the reef there. My name is Ian. I'm also here with the first uh, alumni of Madison. And if you guys remember from last season, there was a amp that was a very similar shape to this, so if you guys made a representation of your amp out of a piece of plywood, this season you can make the processor out of the exact same piece of wood, you just have to cut a little bit off of it. So what we did is we just measured out the dimensions of this year's uh, processor, and we cut about two inches off the entire thing, because it's about two inches bigger around than the amp was last year. So if you guys have a piece of wood like this at your home or where your team meets, you guys can make a processor super, super easily with that wood from last year. And also, if you do have a mock-up of a human player station, it's super easy to just put some wood on top of it and make a representation of the barge as well. Um, this is, that's exactly what we did. So we just put two 2x4s two for kind of the base, and then we screwed uh, four 4x4s four in a square just to hold the balls when we throw them in. And it's a super good representation and an easy way to make a barge without having to build the entire structure. All right, that's all for day two, guys. Uh, big shout out to Milwaukee Robotics Academy for uh, allowing us to use their spaces and this lovely field to do all of our testing and building.